Interesting. Do you think that guy plays ultimate? He does, actually. What gave it away? What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here, and we are back with part three in our final installment of the Upshot series. There are few walks as difficult or frustrating as walking up to the basket knowing that you have to make a significantly longer putt than you needed to simply because we messed up the Upshot. Now in parts one and two, we discussed the backhand from a shorter distance and a longer distance, but I've had many people ask, Robbie, when are you gonna talk about forehands? The reason you may need a forehand Upshot is because sometimes you find yourself pinched off or in a certain place where a backhand just isn't on the table for you. Being able to step out or lean out and throw a forehand upshot to the basket can save you an immense amount of strokes. And one of the best parts is that you really don't even have to have that great of a forehand to start perfecting the forehand upshot. Now, in order to throw forehand upshots, you need to be able to throw a forehand. And if you're unfamiliar or find yourself lacking in that department, feel free to check out this video right here that talks all about the basics of throwing a forehand. We've got the amazing Mike Strauss with us once again, but before we jump into his first segment, I want to talk about the power generated in forehands. In parts one and two of the series, we talked about raising that wrist above the elbow so that we take the power generated and move it out of larger levers into smaller ones. When we're talking about forehands, we have to understand that the spin of the disc coming off of our finger can generate an immense amount of power with minimal movement, and that's exactly what we're looking for in our upshots. One of my favorite ways to teach that lesson is using three Innova molds that are very similar to a catch frisbee. Those are the Makani, the Condor, and the Zephyr. Each of these are PDGA approved, and if you're in a pinch, they can function as a dinner plate just as well. Because of the larger diameter of these discs, they keep you honest when it comes to your angle control, so that if you're putting too much power or too much arm into the disc, it's not gonna go very well. A major flaw of most people throwing forehands, and especially forehand right. upshots, is that they put way too much emphasis on their arm throwing the disc, rather than just relying on the snap generated from your wrist and controlling that small, beautiful motion. So now that we know power on forehands doesn't come from just slinging your arm, but rather the snap of the wrist and the disc rotating off of your finger, let's jump over to Mike as he breaks down some simple tips for forehand upshots. Wrist above the elbow, same as the backhand. Obviously the grip is different. And one of the things that I feel, especially on these upshots, is this finger, there's this, there's this lag as I come through. And I will feel the disc kind of roll off the f off the front as it comes through. So there's this tension that's created. My follow through is with the hand and the fingers a lot more than the arm on a full one. Wrist above, so from the back, from the side, it looks like this. It's not down here, it's not flat like the power shot. If the forearm is parallel to the ground, you're in a power position. Remember, the backhand was the arm getting thrown forward. This is the forearm getting thrown forward also, which creates that lag. You're gonna see this lag. I'm gonna let it open up there, but it's definitely gonna be more hands and fingers than a power shot. And see how that's just gonna float right in. As you can see, not a huge follow through, but I really feel the lag on the fingers and it coming back through. And I feel it rolling off because I use this grip. I feel it roll off that inside edge of the middle finger. And you just float it in making sure that you've taken the power away from the big hinge and the big lever, and you've moved it up into a size that fits the shot. You're scaling down the actual size of the hinge and the lever by doing this. It'll take a little bit of time, there has to be a feel to it, but once you have it, you have it. As I've mentioned before, Mike is my coach. And in our most recent coaching session, as we were breaking down my last tournament performance, which was really bad, let's call it what it is, Mike and I were talking about upshots and we realized there's something we haven't really shared in any of this upshot series so far. When I talk about upshots and seeing many people throw upshots, so often we like to land about 15 to 20 feet short of the basket and skid up to the target. But in this entire series, we've been gaining control in throwing our upshots and when we throw throw the disc short, we are removing the opportunity to score and use this control to our advantage. Mike pointed out that going past the basket is in fact the pro miss. Now quick clarification, going past the basket when there's danger behind it is not the pro miss. That's definitely the amateur miss. You're never gonna throw it in from 150 feet if you try and land 25 feet short of the basket. But a 25 foot putt from in front of the basket is the exact same as a 25 foot putt from behind the basket. So if I'm 
confident that I can make the putt landing short, why would I not be confident in landing the putt long? And if I go for it long, then I also have the opportunity to not putt at all by just throwing it in. Honestly, that thought alone changed my mind about upshots. So I hope you'll join me in throwing some confident upshots and maybe going a little bit past the basket, but who cares? We're gonna make the comeback putt anyways. And speaking of joining me, I wanna tell you about a brand new opportunity we have here at the Robbie C Disc Golf Channel. You may have noticed some of the shirts I've been wearing throughout this video are pretty epic and they come from a company called Circle One Disc. The team over at Circle One has been in the apparel business for years and they brought all of their experience and wisdom to the disc golf scene. So I'm excited to let you know we parked that upshot and Robbie C Disc Golf's official home for merchandise is with Circle One. To celebrate, we're dropping our first shirt based on an iconic sound that's been all throughout the channel from the beginning. I've had so many people tell me that when they miss a putt, they hear a quack inside their head and it makes me so happy to hear that that fun has been brought to your card even outside of these videos. So we figured what better way to celebrate than with a quack shirt. So if you want to support this channel, head over to Circle One's website and pick yourself up a quack shirt. My hope is that the only quacks in the round are on the shirt, not in the chains. If not, it's at least super comfortable. I can promise you that. I am so stoked for this opportunity and I am absolutely blown away that you guys will be willing to rep some Robbie C gear out on the course. It is an honor to be a part of your disc golf journey and I hope that we can continue to grow together. Speaking of getting better, let's head back over to Mike as he gives us a few more tips to throw some forehand up shots from a distance. But I wanted to give you what the mechanics are and the adjustments from the 120, 130 foot putter up shots. Now these are kind of beat up Lunas, so I need to make sure that I give it somewhat of a hyzer so it will hyzer flip. I'm still really concentrating on feeling that lag and I'm really concentrating on feeling that finger, that tension and coming through. I'm gonna hit it, same spot, but instead, I'm not gonna be up here, I'm gonna be lower. Heiser flip at the basket, really, same concept. I'm just gonna do it one step. There's no reason to do any anything else. See, and once you trust the glide on the putter, you can heiser flip it and that, that tension, that lag is there. And by the way, you're not hitting out here. You're hitting here, the release is everything is here and this is follow through. Now, I played that one a little too far left. There's kind of a rule, whether it's backhand or forehand, that if you're throwing a hyzer flip, as it's flipping up the flat, it never leaves its line. Do not aim left unless you're playing the fallback. So this one, I'm gonna aim more at it. And see, get it one time. There it is. I threw it on a hyzer flip. It never left this line. You saw it rise up. It never left this line. Again, happy golfing, and we'll see you on the next episode. I love throwing hyzer flip for hands. One of the biggest reasons I started bagging a Nova is because it honestly reminds me of an ultimate Frisbee lid. I know there are other discs out there that also resemble an ultimate Frisbee lid. Hashtag Polecat fam, hashtag Halo Polecat, hashtag Innova please. Learning to throw the Nova on a forehand hyzer flip has made me have some incredible opportunities as I can just throw the disc nice and lofted at the basket and let it slowly settle and usually land just near the basket if it doesn't go in. It reminds me so much of my ultimate days and in fact when I first started playing disc golf coming from ultimate whenever I threw up shots I would find myself doing my standard routine as if someone was marking me in a game of ultimate and I would literally try to imagine a man running across and trying to throw to that target. There's something to be said about the difficulty of throwing to a stationary target versus is a moving one, so having an imaginary person running across seemed to work for me, and if you're struggling with this, maybe you should give it a try too. But that's enough for bonus tips. I hope this video has been helpful for you guys, and I hope that you feel well equipped to throw some upshots with not only backhands, but forehands as well. If there's anything we didn't cover or questions you have in the overall series, let us know in the comments below, and Mike and I are both gonna be watching pretty heavily to make sure that we can get to every single one of your answers. As always, I wanna say thank you to Mike for coming on and sharing his wisdom with all of us. Head over to the link in the description below and check out his Instagram channel for the full video. I want to say thank you so much for coming by and watching this video. There are many days that I feel still a little goofy standing here trying to talk to a camera, but if it wasn't for each and every one of you, we wouldn't have opportunities to partner with amazing people like Circle One. So truly, thank you. You guys are the true stars of this channel and it couldn't happen without each and every one of you. So for that, I hope you have an amazing week filled with just parked up shots everywhere you go and maybe you'll throw a few in. But for now, I'm going to leave you with the birdie.